and gentlemen, you are about to be spoiled in the best possible way. We're going to finish up talking about The Shield, Episode 3 of Season 7. We're going to talk about Episode 4 of Season... Uh, Episode 5, Season 2 of Rick and Morty. Talk about Episode 9 of Mr. Robot, where everything changes again. And we're even going to spoil Brian Brushwood on Fear the Walking Dead. Brian Brushwood, you didn't watch it. Are you ready to be spoiled? Yeah, well, you know what's funny is I, I apologized and I said, I texted you saying like, I didn't watch Fear the Ra Walking Dead. I missed it. Uh, I didn't know it came out. And, and you were like, you didn't miss much. And, I, and so <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to take, I'm going to ride the wave. And also, I believe technically on the Mr. Robot side of things, this is episode 1.09, right? Which the episode started... Their, their, nom their numbering nomenclature is weird. It started with 1.0, so 1.1 1 .1 right. was the second episode and so The on. first episode we watched was episode zero, correct? Uh, yes, so so that, that means we're on... Is this episode nine? Episode nine, nine is the tenth episode. Okay, okay. So, okay, guys, so we're calling the first one a special and then... Got it, okay. No, we're calling it episode zero. Okay, it's so weird. No, uh, it's, it's just numbers, Brian. It's fine. It's fine. It's cool. I can handle all this. Also, I'm my own. Never mind. Uh, that's a spoiler. <laughs> we'll hold off on that. So, uh, let's uh, introduce Andy Beach, who's joining us. He's our guest on Cord Killers, who did watch Fear the Walking Hello. Dead, but nothing else we watched. We're going to spoil you on everything else, right? I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. And I, I will tell you, the during Fear of the Walking Dead, the one thing I kept really waiting on, I was secretly hoping for a True Detective Season 2 crossover where they would just eat everybody from True, from, uh, True Detective, and then that would be the end of the show. <laughs> and I feel like at that point, if that had actually happened, then I don't care what else happens in Fear of the Walking Dead. Like, it would have accomplished something that was really important for me. <laughs> I've been... Mistreated <laughs> many times in Fear the Walking Dead. All right, uh, enough of that. Let's go check out the movie draft so I can cry a little more. Well, I mean, uh, I gotta admit, I'm a little bit I've surprised. I've got a chance, Brian. I've got a chance. There's still another <laughs> couple weeks left. I just need 326 million to be made. In the next two weeks, by uh, they're, they're going to call it the it's Fantastic over. Surge, Tom. It's okay. all of a sudden the whole world's going to go check out Fantastic Four. You're going to make it. Uh, hey, congratulations. You are king of the mortals, though. Uh, mm -hmm. Team Cord Killers, of course, about to cross over the $1 billion mark, which, again, it is uncanny to me that the winners just all seem to come in at just over a billion or right around a billion dollars. Um, and that certainly is the case. Uh, here's the big question. Did your entire lineup make more money than the single purchase yes. of Jurassic World? Finally, I cannot be beaten by a one movie lineup if that movie <laughs> is Jurassic World. Six hundred seventy one million for Team DTNS and a mere six hundred thirty nine million for Jurassic World. Take that dinosaurs. Yeah, man. And solidly in the middle, not last place, not even second to last place, but not a solid place. fourth place. Last place. Team not, not, not last place. Not last place. That's what the NA stands for in Night Attack <laughs> is not last place. Not applicable to a last place designation. <laughs> there you go. Nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, 593 million. That's respectable, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah whatever. Uh, it was a blast to do, as always. And congratulations awesome. again. Uh, we've got right now in first place in the Chat Realm League is Jedi Wing Knight with $1.2 billion. Now, this is surprising to me that so, uh, again, it's always surprising that we seem to have just one winner in the Chat Realm League, but also that the delta between the chat realm winner and the, uh, the the league players is so small. I'm surprised that it's less than a 20% difference. So that's that. Congratulations uh, in advance to Christy Cates and Milongo. They did a fantastic job picking those three movies. Let's take a look at some triage on Spoiler in Time. This is when we get, when we get good emails from people. Uh, we like to throw them in the triage segment, which you've probably never heard because we've only done it once before. But... <laughs> We got Utred, who wrote in and said, never saw the movie of The Road, the book, until I saw True Detective Season 2. The book left me haunted, and that's the same thing I got here. In both the case was a less, uh, both the cause was a lesser concern than a grinding, losing journey, a glimpse into stories that don't go down in history or get told among pals. I, I just want to say that letter was poetry. I love it. 
It's uh, it and and I think it's right. Uh, in both, the cause was a lesser concern than a grinding, losing journey, a glimpse into stories that don't go down in history or get told among pals. And this, to me, I often judge the merit of television and, and movies by how much I go back to revisit them in my mind. And uh, I will not say that Donnie Darko was a great movie. I will say it was a haunting movie. And I uh, left the theater with so many questions. Primer is the same thing. It's not a great movie. It is a haunting movie. I'm left with questions that I go back and revisit. And it wasn't until halfway, we were silent on our drive back. And I was like, I think I love that movie. And I think you could make a case for the same thing for season two of True Detective. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that I'm the only person here that feels that way. I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> Thank you for not taking this from me, Tom. I appreciate it. You deserve that. Uh, You've we, lived among us. We got another email. <laughs> we got another email uh, regarding Mr. Robot that we'll talk Wait, about hold later. On. Let's, let's do that with yeah. Mr. Robot. Yeah. Uh, and let's start uh, spoiling with Fear the Walking Dead. And as I said to Brian in text message, I don't think you're going to like this. Uh, it was 90 minutes long with commercials, so it's a little less if you if you buy it or, or watch it without commercials. It's plodding. It's a lot of character building of a family and and a drug addict son and a and an uptight upset teenager with just little hints of what's happening that we all know is going to happen around Andy Beach. What did you make of this episode? Uh, it was slow, but I kind of I gave it a pass because I felt like this was all stuff that had to happen. Uh, there was there was some building that needed to be done, and we needed to sort of slowly see uh, walkers sort of emerging and see the the different cutaways of parks and and empty spaces that were starting to occur. And so it's where it goes from here it, it sort of has i felt like i was trying to think last night and I, I feel like it's got three episodes to get its feet under itself before i really truly judge it in any harsh way uh but i'm, I'm in i'll be watching it brian what do you make of my description of this episode i mean here's the thing i have had i've had experiences of stories that took me by the testicles from the very first go uh, uh, certainly Mr. Robot is one of those. It's it's the best show that I've seen this year, uh, full stop. And I knew it was the best show the moment I watched the first episode. Um, I also have had movies or television shows that were painful. Uh, season two of, of uh, True Detective and um, The Leftovers took a long time to ramp up. They felt like homework, but they ended strong. And I felt sucker punched in both of those, you know, near the end as I cared about the characters and really understood uh, I, I, what I, what I, the place my mind wants to put this is, uh, watch it eventually if it gets the okay from other people. But hearing that there's no gut punch at the beginning, that you're not in from day one, that you're not blown away, uh, just makes me say, I, I, I can't stand the thought of investing four or five hours and then figuring out that I wasted it because this show sucks. And I feel like the one or two zombie reveals that you get, and and there is a and there is a zombie right from the beginning, uh, which is how you you get to know the the drug addict character. I feel like everything is telegraphed though. You're like, oh yeah, okay. So there was a drug den, and then of course one of the drug den people died and turned into a zombie because they OD'd. Okay, where are we going next? Uh, and then it's like, oh, a bunch of people are sick. You know. Um, Okay, where are we going next? Uh, that that was the thing that bothered me about it, Andy. Is it's not that I didn't like the characters. The actors did a good job. Uh, right. The characterizations were fine. They weren't the best, but they were fine. But I just felt like everything was telegraphed. I knew exactly what to expect, even down to the near the end of the show when a a character that was I feel abruptly introduced in the middle of the show, uh, you know. And ends up getting killed and then turning. You're like, oh, well, now he's going to turn into a zombie and they're all going to be shocked because, oh, my gosh, zombie. Like it, it just nothing really took me by surprise. Yeah, I could see that. And it again, it, it didn't uh, it didn't captivate me, but uh, I'm, I'm willing to give it a little rope here to 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 see where it's going to go. We'll give them enough knife that they can cut their own heads off with. 
Yeah. Ah, the old sailor saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's move on to that Mr. Robot email. Yeah, email comes in from Jeremy. Uh, this is in regards to uh, episode nine uh, or eight, as as Tom would call it. Um, Tyrell and Elliot's dad had an actual conversation with each other on the bus when Elliot wasn't there. But Elliot's boss went looking to talk uh, went but yeah, but Elliot's boss went looking to talk with Tyrell. Are either of them real? Is anything real, Jeremy? And of course, we got some answers from that on this episode. Um, look, I don't want to say I called it from episode one, but I called this mf from episode one. Yeah, uh, and I was skeptical. I, 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 I didn't think you were wrong, but I was also holding out the potential like, well, but I don't know if it's for sure, which is a testament to how well they told it. Yeah. Uh, and you were so right. You were so nailed it right on. And in a way that I don't mind. I don't feel cheated by it either. But that is a good question. If Tyrell and Elliot's dad had an actual conversation, was that a conversation Tyrell had with Elliot? In which case, you got to look at it through the lens because they very clearly have established. And by the way, we should give a bit of a summary in case somebody's not watching it and, and going in there. Uh, from the beginning, I've called Mr. Robot Fight Club the series because it's about um, it's about you know uh, taking on the establishment by destroying debt records and setting people free, which was literally the plot of Fight Club. You have an outrageous projection of an awesome hacker that 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 Elliot wishes you know he could be at some level. Uh, in Christian Slater, uh, who may or may not be an actual person, uh, you have a flawed narrator who speaks directly to everyone at home. Uh, although, uh, and it's interesting because we lose touch with him from time to time when he goes through his morphine withdrawal and wakes up and is just like, "Oh, you're you're still here. Good. I'm glad that that we're here." Um, and uh, to it, the show's credit, there are two types of watchers of Mr. Robot. Those who saw Fight Club and assume that it's going to have Fight Club-like beats like me and those who haven't. They do an expert job the entire show long of keeping both parties satisfied and interested. And in this case, uh, at episode eight, you get the big reveal that, you know, that that Elliot loses himself. He can't even remember who his sister is. And, uh, and you get that awesome kind of like, you know, we have just lost altitude, put your, you know, seat back at tray tables to their upright position because we're going down. Uh, as you rethink everything you've seen up until this point and see it in a new context. And then the double whammy of seeing that Christian Slater, Mr. Robot is Elliot's dad. And then, and then you think like, Oh, wow. Um, you know, uh, what a reveal. So he's just going to be a guy, and I was wrong the whole time. They purposely framed everything to make me think. They took advantage of my fact that I thought he was a Tyler Durden character, but but it's going to turn out he's real. And then they got me again because the episode starts off with him saying, wait a minute, I thought you died. You come back after 20 years after I died? And he goes, it's very messed up. I'm going to tell you the whole thing. I'm going to be very clear about it. Um, in flat concrete terms and i spend 40 minutes being like wow what a twist he's not tyler durden at all he's not a figment of elliot's imagination and instead they end up at his grave site and he's like peace out i'm actually dead <laughs> uh, you're you crazy to, elliot it's um it, it uh, you knew it all along didn't you i love that Oh. I love that. When they just turn it around like, hey, you, you think you're so smart because you've seen Fight Club? Well, we're going to even like call you out and be like, well, you knew it. I know you knew it. Right. Like, you knew it all so along. Great. And then as if to, again, give double, I'm not going to say double middle, middle fingers, but double winks. They blink at the audience. That's when that's when you wink so hard that you <laughs> you wink both eyes simultaneously. They double wink at the audience when uh, when the big twisty moment when Tyrell um, uh, shows up and puts on blue gloves with Elliot and and says, "I just killed a woman, and this is what it was like, and I have nothing to lose. So tell me." You know, tell me I'm right, and all of this has been you. And he says, "Yes, I will." And he takes him to the arcade, and then that gorgeous, haunting piano version of the Pixies' "Where Is My Mind" plays the exact song that Fight Club ends with. And it's oh, it's such a great wink and a nod. I'm so in, 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 in. Uh, here's the here's the important thing. Uh, so uh, 
they're only doing 10 episodes a season, right? That was the end of the season. Uh, there's one more episode. Season what? finale is next week. Uh, 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 I think this was the finale. Oh, we'll have to find that out from the audience. Oh, okay, AB, I'll take a look at IMDb. AB but Club while said, I was watching this episode, mm -hmm. it said, watch next Wednesday season finale. So oh, that's weird. Maybe I was misinterpreting that. On, uh, on the AV Club re recap for last week, it said this week is the finale. But Okay. Uh, which which I totally believe because because here's why it would make a great finale is because number one we 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 are now in uncharted waters I am totally and completely invested in this story uh, we have gotten through they can now go anywhere from here they have completed all of the arcs that I loved about Fight Club they can keep this this tone. We now have a character, er Elliot, who doesn't know what he wants, a sister who says, no, I believe in you, whether or not you're crazy, your ideas aren't crazy, so we need to keep going. And now we have the wild card of, of Tyrell saying, um, I'm filled with rage and fired by E Corp. I just might want to join your team. Also, I okay. murdered someone. So we have been we have been discussing episode nine, which is episode 1.8. Oh, okay. Wednesday, August 26th is going to be episode 10, which is episode 1.9. Oh, shoot. Got it. I knew this was going to bite us in the butt somehow. Yeah, right. I know. Here it is on wiki. Uh, yeah. But regardless, okay, this is this is even better. If this then then so in this case, this was case, not the finale yet. Yeah, then then that means they're pulling a uh, a Game of Thrones and they're giving us our big twisty moment, you know, the episode before, and now we're gonna see what sets up next. And the idea that uh, Angela uh, might go to work for John C. Dvorak at E Corp <laughs> is uh, is amazing. I, I I love it. I I it's it's the best show that's come out this year, and I would hold it up. Uh, even against Game of Thrones, uh, uh, season for season, I, 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 it's so good. Yeah, it's it constantly impressing you with its ability to capture a subculture, various different subcultures, uh, consistently surprise you, even when you guessed what was going to happen. That's a trick. Yeah. Right. Uh, doing what they did to us where they're like, oh, well, I guess it's not Tyler Durden. Oh, wait. Yep, totally is. And not feel like it was a cheat. That's amazing. Not at all. And, and, and have have characters that are interesting and deep. Well, and and plus also just exquisitely acted. Uh, that dude who plays Elliot, uh, half of his dialogue, his footage is nothing but looking confused and intense. And yet I feel for him. And like that moment when he he essentially turns and looks at me personally sitting at home saying. You knew the whole time, didn't you? I felt the genuine rage and betrayal in him, even though we are a manufactured figment of his imagination, you know, that 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 that, that we are seeing things at his pleasure, you know? Okay, so w wild theory time, right? Okay. Uh, t is Tyrell real? I think he is. I, 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 don't think, I don't think you can explain him not being real. But the other members of F Society... Uh, is, is Darlene got an imaginary companion there? Because I don't remember if Elliot ever interacted with the other girl. I'm doubtful. I, I Darlene don't... and that girl definitely have scenes together. Yes. I don't know that you could pull off a double twist of, well, that's her imaginary friend. Runs you know? in the family. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Could I, I, I think what happens is we get more concrete here. And then if they want to keep us off kilter, we can have side journeys. I, Here's what I think the game plan is now. Pretty much everything's concrete, except for we will see arcs that are similar to the uh, morphine withdrawal episode, where he's having an episode, because now he said, I am insane. I am crazy. I am not well. That also, means you but, I mean, when they were in the van, the lockpick guy was telling Mr. Robot that he didn't trust Elliot. <laughs> Yes. Well, and 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 again, uh, you know, that's the beauty of the flawed narrator, right? Yeah, is, yeah. Is, is that is that that's how he interprets it every time we see. By the way, um, I've been told my entire life that I bear a passing resemblance to Christian Slater, and I want so bad to dress as Mr. Robot for <laughs> for Dragon Con, but there's no way I'm going to pull it together in time. That would I, be amazing if you did. That. I, I really think I could pull off a, so a great cool. Mr. Robot, and I would love. I would love. <laughs> to do that. Uh, you, go you find <laughs> out the scam stuff mailing address, folks, and send your hats and coats yes. to Ryan Brushworth. Oh, dude. If somebody gives me a costume, I will wear it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Andy Beach, now that we've spoiled you on the main twists of Mr. Robot, how do you feel? 
Uh, the thing about uh, Mr. Robot, and I have seen the first three episodes, and then at that point, I was watching it week to week, and I decided it was the kind of show I wanted to just power watch and just burn my way through. So I kind of just put it in the bank, and I've been waiting for the finale. But even listening every week, as you guys describe it, I still have no idea necessarily what's going on. And it's it's going to be a fun watch regardless. It's like listening to you describe a roller coaster, but I haven't been on the roller coaster yet, and I'm just waiting for my turn. Dude, and, and I don't think we've taken anything away from you going into it because, again, you know, like like I saw Fight Club, and the second I saw the first episode, I was like, I've got guesses where this is headed, but I don't know. Uh, oh, uh, there was one scene that's remarkable. Uh, Tyrell's... Uh, the way to humanize Tyrell is to demonize his wife. She is an effing monster. She she casually drops the fact that she gave away a child for adoption at age 15. And also, by the way, she's going to drop his ass unless he succeeds on the corporate ladder. Because, God damn it, she made a bet on him and he better deliver. She's not the least bit bothered that, she, that, that he killed a woman. Uh, all she cares about is, are you going to get this done or not? Uh, I think that's a way that we can almost sympathize with Tyrell, similar to Vic Mackey. Vic Mackey. Yeah, it's funny. Like I, I felt that just showed that she was ruthless and that they were that that he needed someone like her to drive him. I felt he got more humanized when he got fired. Yeah, I, I, the the problem was his whole reaction. I didn't know if he was playing a script or doing something because I mean he he is something superhuman and you know inhuman and monstrous yeah but his plan never involves getting fired agreed agreed yeah. but what i think that's why i was dis i to be honest when the guy said you know i played out all the ways you could handle this and this is the one that you gave me I, to be honest i'm disappointed that's how i felt as a viewer i thought tyrell was better than having a meltdown shaking his fist at a cloud and shouting i worked so hard for this company but that that i guess that's what i mean because i felt the same thing and to me that's like oh okay so he is not an unstoppable monster like his wife he needs his wife <sighs> Because she is actually the power behind the throne. That moment when Elliot's like, do I need to say it? I guess we'll say it. I am Mr. Robot. I mean, oh, those those little self-referential -refer winks could go so bad and be so awkward. But instead, I just feel respected. And this is, this is what's great. This is what the hacker community... Um, I, I gave a talk at Google recently talking about uh, the importance of loving your online trolls or, or truly embracing them and un, and respecting them. And I talked about the 4chan uh, uh, attack on the Scam School channel and about how the only way we were able to stop it is to make it not fun for them. And you, it's not fun to toilet paper someone's house when they genuinely love and respect you and they know you're powerful. Then it's, you know, it's like you don't want to do anything to someone who already knows you're powerful. That's why we don't kick our dogs. That's why we're like, yeah, you're cuddled up to me because, anyway, that's the way I felt like an, as an audience member is I was made to cuddle up with the show because it showed me so much respect with that moment where it's like you knew all along, didn't you? Uh, it's, oh, it's great, great. And just a, a coda to all of this, uh, as a throwaway, they give you an amazing computer shop flashback to know, 1994 to, the, to 1994 honestly better than the entire first season of halt and catch fire no, as far as like throwback computer nostalgia note, just that one little scene note perfect right yeah. down to the fact that that, that it's clear uh, mr robot is peeling off labels of existing floppies so he can resell them yeah. and make a buck off of each of those it's it's yeah. amazing all right, let's uh, quickly touch on Rick and Morty, Episode 5, Season 2, wherein uh, we mock both religion and reality music shows. Yeah, man. Talk about a show that, 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 that uh, has a wide spectrum. It's almost as though they were doing double backflips, showing off that they could do both in the same show and make you care about both in the same show. They were getting swifty. Uh, yes, which, by the way, for the record... Uh, uh, we we saw this was one of the two episodes that we saw and that we swore ourselves to secrecy. Oh uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> get swifty, <laughs> take off your <laughs> underpants. Uh, the uh, we saw this at the Alamo Draft House presented by uh, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland, and we didn't mention it except for Brant definitely snuck in two weeks ago on Scam School a swifty reference. 
knowing that we would be in uh, under the radar, kind of like Way in before. Way more than two weeks ago now. Was, was it two weeks? Now, now it's been almost a month, maybe. Wait, wait. I mean, this is episode five, and he did that almost right after the premiere. No, no. It was, I, it was only like two weeks ago. I, uh, I want to say. I, I mean, you, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was uh, – uh, I could find the episode. Okay. If you look you at – um, yeah. You guys can figure that out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, that's why. <laughs> like nobody cares but you two. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was the Flaming Bill episode from two okay. weeks ago. That's uh, uh, at any rate, uh, dude. It, it the script writing is so tight. It's so good. I love the fact that the president gets you serious. There was elements of um, uh, Doctor Strange Love yes. in there with the war room. Uh, uh, the uh, the president is voiced by that awesome black dude with the voice that that's he's in everything. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? No. He was, he was the draft. <laughs> I have no last idea week. what you're talking about. Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh, dude, I didn't notice that. Yeah, he was the reverse draft last week. Oh, he's got that great. Uh, uh, Keith, Keith David, David, they're shouting. Uh, oh, okay. here, call up his IMDb if you don't mind. Sure. Um, the, uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, the, the president was amazing. And <laughs> like little moments, like, like sorry, we've got to go to the Pentagon. Not the awesome one, the crappy Not one here the on Earth. The Pentagon, <laughs> the stupid one on Earth. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I, you know, honestly, last, last week's episode was amazing, but I loved this week's episode, even though it wasn't as twisty as last week's episode, it was, you know, more, more linear in his presentation, but the fact that they kept so many balls in the air, not just, I mean, you have the main plot points of like worshiping the heads and the reality TV show, but then you got all these little side plots with with the president, with you know the idea of a daughter respecting uh, her elders, you know. But is it for the right reasons or the wrong reasons? Like it was a great juggling act, and I loved every minute of it. Yeah, I think that is the magic of Rick and Morty is that it it is so it's doing backflips over all of the writing of all the familiar series we've seen before, and yet has time to spare in order to show some of that Dan Harmon rage against uh, social constructs and where we are. The fact that you can attack religion and reality TV in the same breath and also keep me genuinely cackling the entire time. Uh, because, like, I'll tell you where I really saw it was when uh, Morty steals the portal gun. Like, the fact that they just made up six fascinating dimensions that I would love to explore, you know, and yet just showed them for two seconds each, like bleh, uh, crazy. Well, and then they imply an amazing backstory to Birdman and Tammy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Morty's like, her arc. Tammy. <laughs> And and Morty's and Morty's like 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 you you just saw her the other day, it's it's so oh it's great oh, and and then he invents a whole backstory to Ice T's banishment the fact that he used oh, right. to be yeah and and then then we get that glorious ending where he becomes Water T yeah by the way I made the mistake of not sticking around for after the credits uh for an awful long time. Uh, do yourself a favor. If you jump in, Definitely. realize that the best parts are often after the credits. But it's like he's like he's like uh, was it Mercury J, Helium Q, Magnesium J, yeah. Father. He's <laughs> obviously a flaming Q. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, Andy Beach, how do you feel being spoiled by Rick and Morty? I have tried to watch it, and it just doesn't stick. <sighs> uh, okay, for what it's worth. Yeah, give me the episode. Give me, tell me what I need to do. Uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, here's, I, 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 there's probably a quote you could find of me saying it. The first three or four episodes were like beating my head against a car door window. But uh, the joke is normally, but it feels so good when you stop. But weirdly, it started to feel real good to beat my head against that car window, and I've been beating my head against it ever since. I'm gonna say stick with it. It's, it's, it's the smartest sci-fi writing. Of the, of the year. Can, can you think of anything right. smarter in science fiction on television, Tom? Smarter? Sm in smarter. Science fiction, no. Right? I can't. Like, uh, I mean, it's better than anything from Doctor Who in the last two years, right? I don't think they're comparable. I know that there's that, why didn't you tell me it was Doctor Who but, but cool that Justin made? And I get that. I, like, get that comparison. But it's really more of, like, that's the pitch, not the comparison. Doctor Who isn't trying to be what Rick and Morty's trying to be. Correct. Um, yeah, I don't think there is anything that's compares comparable. I, I will I will say this. If you want if you enjoyed Ice T 
then uh, you can enjoy uh, the evolution of Ice Tea as played by Dan Harmon by listening to Harmon Town. Um, uh, that like about a year ago when I got Justin into it, they did a whole thing where they had <laughs> they had Dan Harmon pretending to be Ice Tea, dungeon mastering a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, as uh, uh, other players played stuff, and uh, <laughs> that, that's all I'm gonna say. I can't. I uh, uh, never mind. Give me a break. All right, let's finish up with the Shield episode three of season seven is Money Shot, wherein Corinne gets arrested. That's the first time when I'm like, wait, what? How does she get arrested for her daughter drinking beer with the neighbor's son? Like I'm not quite like the daughter was is old enough to be left and did something like you but then you put the mother in handcuffs does that really happen like i was a little confused about that uh mostly it's about vic trying to work out uh the the sort of complex sting operation where he's double crossing resian from the armenian mob while trying to make resian thinks he he's helping him out uh, so he gets Resian busted stealing the guns, but makes it look like he got turned in by one of Resian's own men uh, and, and pulls that off. Meanwhile, Shane's like, so we're cool now? And Vic's like, nope, still not cool. Uh, this is not going to be cool anytime soon. And we didn't see Pazuela in this episode, but he is still working with Aceveda to try to use those papers on Pezuela to bring him down. But Aceveda has now double crossed Vic by stealing the papers while moving them and not telling Vic where they are. And Vic was going to use those to, uh, to try to help his leverage against the Armenian mob. And it's, it's all like a beautiful, glorious, complex mess of a plan that can't possibly end in anything but disaster, uh, but probably won't because that's the way Vic Mackey goes. And at the same time, you've got Gardaki showing his worth again, being able to pull off single-handed a whole like bust of, of, a, of an adult entertainment circle, even though they get double-crossed by one of their informants. And, and really, season seven to me is like the rise of Gardaki. Like he's always just been the guy lurking in the background and like, oh yeah, you go take care of that. And now we're seeing the other side of it. We're like, when he goes and takes care of that, he goes and takes care of that. That guy is good. Like he is probably the most competent of the entire strike team. Yeah, so um, I agree that the plans, for, and and uh, again, I don't think this is a spoiler, but but it it it, it this is where it gets, uh, plans get more desperate, which means more silly as they're laid out, uh, but also that's how you play in the last few seconds of a really good football game when there are seconds on the clock and you are behind and you have nothing to lose. You go for crazy long bomb plays, and and uh, and that's what we're seeing here. Um, and I am too afraid of spoiling things, so that's all I'll say about this episode. Outside yeah, and of- it's actually kind of hard to remember all of the details of what happened, even though I just watched it yesterday, because it really blends into like one long con that Vic is trying to pull off. And there's so many moving parts well, to it, I can't keep it straight. But but here's, here's again, I keep bringing up the metaphor of a chessboard. Like, you know the position of the board. It's hard for you to remember the last three moves. Yes. Because you've been watching how they've been playing the whole time. And you know where you are now. You know which piece threatens which piece. As a matter of fact, this is actually a psychological uh, uh, experiment on memory, is uh, when they take chess masters and they ask them to memorize board positions, if the positions make sense and they can kind of tell this guy's going for this this guy's going for that they're able to recreate it exactly however if they do a nonsensical setup like just randomly placing pieces they can't remember it all so you are you are the victim tom of the very real circumstance of you understand the machinations of all the players so it's hard for you to remember how you got here that's why wikipedia exists thank goodness (laughs) uh that is it for spoiler in time andy beach thanks for sticking around letting us spoil you and like I mentioned in the um, uh, between the shows, uh, the Shield is on my list, and I think it's the next one that I, I watch while I'm at the gym. I feel like it's the perfect gym watching show. So. Man, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna warn you: stop listening to Spoiler in Time starting right now because uh, because because the beginning of this journey is one question, and you get 
one answer, and you don't want to know that answer when it starts. I, I or I assume you don't. Maybe you do. I don't know. I'm, you know what? I have a totally. I'm I'm like the opposite of uh, Jeff Kanata. I I don't care if I'm spoiled, and knowing knowing the end result and knowing the path that got you there are two totally different things. So I'm if I'm if I'm in, I'm in, and it it never bothers me. Right on. Well, folks, we assume it doesn't bother you because you have been listening or watching this. So thank you for letting us spoil you to death. I hope you feel really spoiled and you're throwing a fit. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>